It's often said that of the first three Halo games, Halo 2 is the hardest to complete on Legendary, and seeing as I almost beat Halo 2 without taking any damage, Halo 3 should be a cakewalk, right? Can you beat Halo 3 without taking any damage? Here's how this works. Every time I take damage, I reload the last checkpoint. It might take dozens of attempts to get past a certain area, but doing it this way ensures that I do make it through without taking damage. Also, I'm not going to talk about every fight I get into. We'd be here for like 5 hours if I did that. Arrival is the first and easiest level because there are no enemies that could cause damage. Look at that, we're already 10% of the way through the game. Next is Sierra 117 where we get into combat for the first time. Just like in Halo 2, there are a few ways to go about this. The first is to sit back with a precision weapon and pick off enemies. The second way is to sneak past any enemies to avoid any potential damage. The third is to run forward and potentially take damage to learn where the enemies are and what you're going to be up against in that area. The last and least effective way is to go in guns blazing. In a room with grunts, that could work, but anything more than that and you're asking to take damage. The first area is straightforward and not difficult. What we learn here is that you can actually dodge shots from weapons like the plasma pistol, plasma rifle, and spiker, which opens up a whole bunch of possibilities. 20 minutes in and we finally get the battle rifle. Take out the brutes and the grunts with a few well-placed grenades, then the jackals with carbines, and we're ready to rescue Johnson. My plan was to take out the two brutes near Johnson and then deal with the small army beneath the cliff. But before I could snipe the brutes, I had to kill the jackal on a nearby rooftop. I used a brute shot to clear out the grunts and jackals, then let the arbiter and the marines do most of the heavy lifting with the chieftain. Once Johnson was free, all that was left was to sit inside the building and wait for the pelican to arrive. I also put the arbiter in the drink with the gravity hammer, because why not? With Sierra 117 complete, Crow's Nest is up next. Use a battle rifle and some grenades to clear out the hallways, spend far too long in the hangar, and you're ready to face the drones. I've tried a few times to kill a lot of them, but soon discovered that it was easier to just sit back and let everyone else deal with the drones. More challenging than the drones was the next area, containing several brutes and a brute chieftain. The strategy is the same as it's always been, BR, grenades, headshots, and sitting behind corners. I dropped some deployable cover down this hole to make sure I didn't take any damage from the fall. When it came time to fight the jump pack brutes for the first time, I sorta of cheated. I rode the pelican up to a small building to get a jump on the brutes when they spawn up there. More hallways, a brute with a fuel rod cannon, arm a bomb, try desperately to get a killionaire on the drones but never quite get it, clear out the hangar once again, and crow's nest is finished. Did you enjoy that little warm up? I hope so. Things are going to get a lot harder from here on out, because Savo Highway is up next. There are a lot of enemies in the Warthog area. If you stick to the outer bounds of the map, you can avoid damage while a marine on the turret does his best to clear out the area. To go forward from here, you need to disable an energy shield. I killed those guarding the shield generator, parked a Warthog right in front of the shield, blasted the fucker open, then hid behind a pipe. Warthogs, unfortunately, can't climb ladders. So I had to ditch it and continue on foot. The first wraith we encounter doesn't have a gunner, making it nice and easy to stun and board. Use the wraith to rain down hell from a distance, then continue on with the mission. I tried taking out the choppers with the wraith. I tried taking out the wraith with my wraith. What I ended up doing was easily the dumbest thing I could have done. I somehow managed to get a checkpoint on the bridge with only a plasma pistol and a shotgun. Now, if you know anything about killing brutes and wraiths from a distance, you know that a plasma pistol and a shotgun are just about the worst things you could have. But I did have a plan. Descend from above and kill the first brute with my plasma pistol and a punch to the face. Pick up and immediately deploy his energy shield, chuck my three grenades at the nearby brutes, then run like hell and hide under a truck. From there, I could kill the rest of the brutes in the immediate area, then stun the wraith from a distance to keep the gunner from seeing me, and use the wraith to destroy everything in my path. It may have only taken about 9 minutes, but trust me, those 9 minutes felt more like 12 minutes. Kill the remaining brutes with the wraith, pick off the stragglers, and Savo Highway is complete. Guess what? Savo Highway was another practice round. The storm is where shit gets real. The first two segments of this mission are more of the same. Hallways, brutes, grunts, boring stuff. Then we've got two wraiths that need to be destroyed. The anti-air wraith is out in the open with nowhere to hide, making it not difficult to destroy. 
Time consuming, sure, but not difficult. Just kill the marines and the warthog to make sure they don't drive you around, then use the turret to light that motherfucker up. Also, destroy a hornet because why not? The normal wraith is much harder. Now, it's not entirely the game's fault. From where I was sitting, it was hard for me to see exactly where the wraith was. Blasting it with a ghost or a warthog was just not gonna cut it. After I almost got stuck in a dumpster, I got a checkpoint exactly where I wanted to get one, just below the wraith. Most plasma-based weapon fire can be dodged, but plasma turret shots are a hell of a lot faster. So if the gunner has his sights on you, you're pretty much toast. At one point, I managed to get behind the wraith and melee to death, but the explosion happens before you can get away from it, and it causes damage because of course it does. What's the solution? Kill the gunner and board the wraith. It's just that easy. If you're not careful in the next area, a couple brutes might get loose and take the wraith for themselves. Try not to let that happen. The drone attack doesn't last very long. If you just sit back for a minute, they'll be out of your way in no time. The rocket launcher mongoose squad makes quick work of the wraiths and the ghosts in the next segment. And then there's the scarab. Pretend the missile pod is a bat and knock out the scarab's knees. Then board the scarab and don't blow yourself up like I did. A lot of trial and error later, and the beast was finally defeated, but we're not done yet. If you have a couple grenades left over in a carbine, the hunters are easy enough. The sniper rifle is useful to knock the chieftain's health down, then you can use a bubble shield and a BR to finish him off. After 90 minutes of torture, we can end this level with a bit of fun. Pick up the chieftain's gravity hammer and invincibility, go to town on the grunts and the brutes, garden the anti-air gun, and the storm is complete. The next level, Floodgate, is where we encounter the Flood for the first time in Halo 3. The first portion of this level, backtracking through the area we just came through in the previous mission, is straightforward if you've got a shotgun, as most of the Flood here are the melee-only variety. A bunch of elites arrive to be your redshirts, taking the brunt of the Flood assault. The real challenge is when you've got to search the ship for Cortana. In theory, this is just more of the same, fire from a distance, hide behind cover, whatever. There's just a fuck ton of flood to deal with, plus there's the ranged flood form. These bad boys fire from a distance with near laser accuracy, and what they fire comes out so fast you can't really dodge it. There's some strategy, but for me, it came down to brute force. After 30 minutes in the same area, you'll figure out where all the enemies are, where they'll fire from, and how you can kill them all. By the time I was finished, the only ranged weapon I had left at my disposal was a spiker with about half a clip left. Enter the ship, retrieve Cortana, and Floodgate is complete. Next up is the Ark. The beginning of this level took longer than it should have. After dealing with all the Flood in the last level, I got a bit cocky. That said, this level is a breath of fresh air compared to what we've come from. There's a rocket launcher near a crashed pelican. You may want to use it to take out the Prowlers, but I'd recommend saving at least one shot and giving it to a Marine riding on your Prowler. You'll have infinite ammo and can make quick work of the ghosts and the other nonsense in the area. Then realize it was a stupid idea to give a marine a rocket launcher and give it to the ODST instead. Try to stick to the edges of the map to let the ODST destroy the wraiths and ghosts before moving forward. Things get even easier once you get the tank. Keep rocket launcher guy by your side and all will be good. There's a goss hog waiting for you in the next area. Luckily, the marine on the gun seems to know what he's doing drive around, let him and the other tanks kill everything, and you'll be greeted by another scarab. Once again, I tried a lot of different techniques. What I found worked the best was taking the Gauss Hog to the edge of the map, destroying one of the scarab's kneecaps and the turret protecting the core. Board it, shoot it, jump off, and it's dead. Continue onward into the structure with the Arbiter. After lots of murder, head downstairs for an evac. Use most of your ammo on the Chieftain, kill the other brutes, and the storm is finally complete. The Covenant is another long one. Spartan laser the turret, headshot some brutes, and drive towards the first tower. And once again, I got myself in a shitty situation thanks to a poorly timed checkpoint. There are two prowlers, two gunners, and I've got a beam rifle with three shots left. And to make matters worse, I got the checkpoint right when my beam rifle was overheating. So I have to wait for it to cool down every single time. I only needed to kill the gunners. The brutes driving around were not an issue. Eventually, after a lot of attempts, I discovered that there are more beam rifles nearby. I cleared the entrance to the building, entered the domicile, dealt with, guess what, more brutes, took an elevator, killed another chieftain, picked up his hammer and equipment, and went back down to finally get my goddamn killionaire. 
The Hornet section was a nice change of pace. With all the friendly aircraft swarming about, my chances of getting hit were slim to none. And then I fucked up. Real bad. I got fed up with the brutes and deletes taking so long to kill each other, so I used my hammer to knock a crate into position and went straight for the elevator. You know what's up there? About 7 brutes with active camo, and yet another chieftain, this time with a plasma turret. And what did I have? Why, a spiker and a gravity hammer, of course. This took me about 25 minutes. I had to pick up a plasma pistol to stun a brute that always runs into a specific spot, shoot him a bit to make him run towards me so I could kill him and get his flame grenades, then carefully peek out from behind cover to kill the brutes on the left and use a few of my grenades to kill the rest of the brutes. Now, the chieftain was tricky. His plasma fires too quickly for me to dodge, which is why I needed the flame grenades. I had to throw them at the chieftain to make him jump out of the way, allowing me to load him with needles from a needler. That was the plan, anyway. Most of it worked, but the chieftain was not the threat I thought he was. One flame grenade, and he was toast. But we're not done yet, because the Flood have arrived. And what better weapons to deal with this infestation than a gravity hammer and a fucking needler? After half a century in there, I made it outside and realized what came next. Not one, but two scarabs. The upside is that I had a hornet this time and you don't even need to board the scarabs to destroy it if you blast off its backside. Oh, you think we're done? No, no, not even close. The Prophet of Truth isn't even dead yet. I let the Flood do most of the heavy lifting, I just sort of sat back with a fuel rod cannon and fired from afar. Truth is dead, now we must escape. This surprisingly only took a few attempts, and after nearly 130 minutes, the Covenant is complete. Remember when I said Savo Highway was when things got hard, and when I said the Covenant was a long one? Yeah, both of those were lies. Cortana might be the hardest thing I've ever done in a video game. This level is notoriously tough, but I'd go so far as to say that this is even harder than beating it on Legendary with all skulls on. This level follows a pretty recognizable pattern. Cortana and or Gravemind take over your screen and say something. You pass through a doorway and have to clear a room. Pretty straightforward. But the amount of stuff you have to get through, the number of enemies, is just fucking absurd. Those ranged forms that gave me trouble in Floodgate are back, and there's tons of them. The first time through I got myself stuck with no way out. There were Flood in every direction, no matter where I went, no matter what weapons I used, I just couldn't proceed. The last 15 minutes were a waste of time. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that every enemy encounter in this level was a nightmare. The second time around I got smart. It takes two to three shots from a brute shot to kill a ranged form flood. Then I found out that a single melee from the brute shot will kill almost any flood form immediately, even the giant tank forms. All told, that first area alone took me about 45 minutes to get through. It didn't get any easier from there, but if nothing else, I knew that what I once thought was impossible was in fact possible. The next area was harder. The amount of flood was probably similar, but it was in a much more confined space. There are two carrier forms that will explode into little parasites if you get too close. The bitch of it is that their locations change every time you reload that checkpoint. If you can make it beyond the carrier forms, use a brute job melee to take out two ranged forms before they can transform, and throw a few grenades at the enemies further on, you can take shelter in a small cave and use a deployable shield to block off the entrance behind you. It's not easy by any means, but it is possible. Just to give you an idea, here's a bit of what we're dealing with in this area. There is some strategy at play here, but most of it is just trial, error, and willpower. The reactor room is actually a nice change of pace, as you can keep a lot of distance between yourself and the flood. Rescue Cortana, destroy the reactor pylons, and escape. The escape wasn't actually that bad, at least not compared to the hell that was the rest of the level. Let the Arbiter do the hard work, enter the Pelican, and at long last, Cortana has been beaten, and it only took almost two and a half hours. The end is near. The last level, Halo, is next. The first thing you'll want to do when assaulting the control room is pick up an explosive weapon to take out the flood that have ballistic weapons like SMGs or assault rifles. You can't dodge those shots, so you'll want to eliminate them before proceeding. Use caution when ascending towards the control room. Use a brute shot if you can find one. It's an explosive weapon which is great against the Flood, and it could one-hit kill almost all Flood with a single melee. It's pretty powerful. There's an invincibility pickup near the door, which is useful to have in your back pocket. And, just like Halo 2, there's a part of Halo 3 where damage is unavoidable. 
After Guilty Spark kills Johnson, he blasts you with his beam. When you regain control after the checkpoint, you're already hurt. It's unavoidable. Not even the invincibility will help here. Avoid Guilty Spark's blasts, pick up the Spartan laser, and this little boss fight shouldn't be that difficult. Exit the building, let the Sentinels kill the Flood, and then you kill the Sentinels. Take a seat in the Warthog, stupidly activate your invincibility at the worst possible time, and it's almost over. The Arbiter will take most of the damage from the Sentinels since he's on the turret. Some of the damage will be absorbed by the Warthog, and the rest can be avoided with a bit of forethought. Make the jump to the Pelican, and Halo 3 is complete. If you've made it this far into the video and have been paying attention, it should be fairly obvious to you that this was stupidly difficult. This was by far the hardest Can You Beat challenge I've ever done, so much so that it makes me not even want to play Halo 3 ever again. And unfortunately, thanks to that little bit with Guilty Spark, you cannot beat Halo 3 without taking any damage. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Halo 3 without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.